Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be looking at installing the scriptable properties package to your Unity. So first things first, I'm just going to open up a fresh new Unity project here through Unity Hub. We'll just go with the basic 3D import and I'll just name it tutorial here. All right, so I'm just going to skip ahead while this loads up uh, and we'll get right into the project. So first things you're going to want to do is, uh, if you're downloading this from the Asset Store, obviously open the Asset Store uh, and then go to the Store page and hit the Import button, but I've just got it right here on my desktop, so I'm going to drag that in and it'll take a moment to initialize. You want to include everything in the package here and then hit Import. All right, so basically what Scriptable Properties is, is it allows you to create scriptable objects that hold a variety of different data types. But before we get into that, we're going to quickly add TextMesh Pro to your project if it's not already in there. Uh, it should be included with most of the recent versions of Unity, uh, but if not, there'll be an install button right there instead of up to date. That's not needed, but we're going to use it because it's a lot nicer to work with. So to get started here, we can just right click, go to create, hatch down stu studios, and then we have our different types here. So we have booleans. Uh, we have uh, numbers, which is integers and floats, and we have strings. So I'm just going to create a bool real quick. And as you can see here, I'll just name it bool, uh, and it should has a value that is either true or false, as a boolean is, and you can toggle that on and off. So I'm going to create one of each type real quick, just to show things off. So here's the int, or the float, sorry. Uh, and you can just go in, you can type a float in there, whatever you want. Uh, and you can see it has a little f to de designate that it's a float. Uh, same thing with integer, you can just make an int and type in, and you'll notice you won't be able to do a decimal in there. And then finally, float, or sorry, string, and with string, you can just type in uh, whatever you want in the field, uh, and you've got your string. So I'll just go with the classic, uh, hello world. And there, there we have it. Those are the basic types. Um, we also have uh, operators, so these compare two different types. Um, two of the same type rather. Uh, so you can do compare it to a constant or you can compare it to another scriptable bool and it will run the equation seeing if the comparison between, between two of them is true or false. All right, so I'm just gonna hop into a scene I've already set up so we can look at some of the more advanced stuff. All right, so as you can see, I've just set up some basic uh, GUI elements just so we can show off some of the things that the uh, scriptable properties are capable of. So I'm going to go in here and first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up this boolean toggle. So basically what this is going to do is you click the button and it turns the boolean from true to false and back and forth. So we're going to make a bool real quick and we'll just, we'll just call this bool toggle. There we go. And then We'll go in here and on the on click, we'll drag it in and you can see that it has a variety of different functions here. Uh, so you can toggle it, you can set its value uh, either just by bool or by another scriptable bool. Uh, you can reset it and you can print it. So we're gonna go with the toggle because we just want it to click on and off. So now if you watch, uh, when I hit play and I click the button, it goes from true or from false to true, true to false, back and forth. So another thing we've included in here is some helper scripts to assist uh, with setting up some event-based uh, gameplay. So one of them is the print value, which basically just takes one of the scriptable properties and it prints its value in a text field. So if we put it in there uh, and then we hit play, you'll see that it will show in the text field beside the toggle button the current state of the bool. And it toggles in between them. So we're going to go through and we're just going to set that up for the int and for the string uh, and see how those work. I'm just going to delete this uh, button real quick. So we're going to make it so that every time you click this button, the int goes up by one. So we're going to make another int, add amount of tools, properties, and int. All right. And then we'll go to the button and same thing, we'll just drag it into the event. And as you can see, it also has a bunch of different properties. We have add, divide, multiply, subtract, set, and all of those are uh, doable with both an int or another scriptable property. Uh, so you can end up nesting scriptable properties to manipulate each other. All right, so we're gonna add, and we're gonna add one every time you click it. 
And we're going to do the same thing we did before with the print value. I've already got one set up on this one, so we'll just drag that in. And there we are. When we click the int button, it increases by one. So pretty simple stuff uh, right here. And finally, we're going to do the string, which will make a string. And this time we're going to be using an input field, so it's slightly different. Uh, we can go down and there is this on value change, one of the events. And basically that's going to happen every time you type a new um, thing in. And we could use the events built into the, um, the actual scriptable property, which we have add to end, add to beginning, set, upper, or lower. But we can actually use the dynamic event and it will just set it straight from the value that is actually in the input field. So we're going to do that and then we're also going to set the text mesh pro to do another print value. And now whenever we type something in that field, it is going to just come out uh, in the string ahead above it, just like that. And it actually changes the string itself as well. So those are some basic uh, implementations. Next, we're going to look at uh, combining them to do one of the bool operators. So we're going to make a bool operator here. And this is going to allow us to do some very basic uh, logic to have certain events trigger at certain times. So we're going to want it to just be an AND statement. And we're going to create two bools uh, to assist us in here. So we'll have bool 1. And then we can just duplicate that for bool 2. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before with the toggles uh, so that they each toggle on and off as we click them. Just a quick setup of throwing them in these buttons. And then we're going to go and we're going to do the same thing with the print values so we can see the actual values of them. So I'll just add a print value to both of them and throw in the bools on each one. I already got one on here, so just do that and delete this one. Okay. And then for the actual uh, text below, we're going to use this bool checker script. And basically what this does is it checks the condition, which can be any scriptable bool. And then if it's true, it runs the on true event. And if it's false, it runs the on false event. And we're going to throw our scriptable bool operator into there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make it print as well. And we'll throw in uh, just a random event to see that it is actually playing the on true. So we'll just throw our main camera in there and change its name uh, to be true if the event is true. There we go. Okay, just double check I've got my buttons here and we're gonna add the actual bool checker to do check condition every time one of those buttons are pressed to see if it is changing the overall value or not. Uh, and I have forgotten to put the actual booleans into the bool operator. So I'm gonna go do that right now. So we can go to logic and drag one in there and drag two in there and then we can hit play. And you can see on the side, it actually shows the value of what it is going to be in the actual uh, scriptable property. So now it's true and it says true and it has run the event to rename the camera. All right, so that is some of the basic things. We're gonna go uh, a little bit more advanced because um, you can create pretty uh, in-depth logic trees with all of the different operators in here and the number of bools you can include. So we're going to look at a few other uses uh, of some of the other properties that are included in the package. All right, so we're going to jump over to the next page. And here we're going to be able to do uh, some actual map op math operations with some of the scriptable properties. As it says, math operations on the scriptable ints and the scriptable floats. Uh, so we'll be able to put things in value 1, value 2 here. And same thing as before, if the on string changed, we'll be able to set things up. But we can also change these to be integer number only in terms of the content type, so people can't accidentally type a string in uh, and then the casting for the int goes wrong. So we'll just create two ints real quick. We'll just call them value one and then duplicate it for value two. And we'll go here and on value change, we'll just throw that in there. And we're just gonna do the same thing as before. We could do it base or we could use the dynamic. So we're gonna use that dynamic so it reads from the input field. Uh, do that to the second one as well. Throw that in there and set value. So now those two will update based off of the input fields. And on this last one, we're going to do a print value and we're going to create a math object. 
So go to scriptable numbers and there is math int. So what this does is it allows you to do math uh, starting at the top and going down. You can put in a number of different properties, either constants or scriptable objects. So I'll just type in these two here. And when I hit play, it will show the results. So four plus five is nine. Uh, now we're going to throw our value 1 and our value 2 in there. And now whatever I type into the input fields will be added to this and then calculated into the result. All right, and then it will display. So we're going to hit play. And just type in here 1 plus 1 is 2, or plus 8 is 9. And as you can see, it's doing the math properly. So you can do a bunch of different things. You can multiply, add, subtract, or divide. Uh, and you can do this for both uh, floats or for ints. It will always cast to whatever the actual uh, scriptable property type is. So if you're doing a scriptable um, math int and you put floats in there, they will cast to be ints. And if you do the opposite and put ints into the, um, the float, then it will cast them to be floats. All right. So that is the basics of how the math works. Um, you can expand it to have as many operations as you want, uh, and they will always go from top to bottom. Uh, so now we're going to take a look at this timer that you've been seeing at the top of the screen. And this is actually going to use another one of the helper scripts, uh, a couple of them actually. Where it first is this mono behavior event, which will just run events based on the time you want them to run. So in this case, we want when this page is enabled to start this timer script. So timed event is basically it has two areas where you can run events at the start of the event or at the end of it. Uh, so we're going to set the int to match with that timer at the top. And we're just going to walk through this real quick. So we have the wait time in between, which is how long in between each instance of the event. And then we have the time of the event, which is how long it lasts from the time start to the time end. And then the start delay, which is how long it starts before it begins playing. Uh, and then we have is repeating the number of times you might want it to repeat uh, If it's zero then it will go on forever and then play on enable and we don't want it to play on enable because we've already set it up to Play on enable up there Okay, and then we're gonna go in here. We're gonna add our int and we just want it to add one every second so plus one and Then the time in between is one so it will every second add one and this time it will steadily go up now we also want to be able to restart the timer. So in order to do that, we're going to be using another helper script, and this is the reset scriptable properties. So this is very simple. Every property you put inside that array uh, will be reset when you call reset on the actual script. So, and it will reset to the time, uh, the default value, which is what it has before runtime. So reset all properties, and now we can let it play, and then reset it and it will just go back to the value it had at the start of runtime, which is zero. So those are a few more implementations you can do uh, using the scriptable properties, and we're gonna move on to uh, basically very simple dialogue you can uh, end up creating. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up, uh, as you can see, some basic dialogue. So when you type in your name in the text field, it is going to update uh, the things below it to reflect what you have typed in. So I've set up the string uh, as well as resetting this first message. So what it's going to do is at the start, whenever you put something new into the string and end, it is going to reset it back to that message you saw before. And then it's going to add the name on to the end. We're just going to remove that. But it is also going to check to see if the name you have put in matches a certain name, in which case it's going to be my name. And if it does, then it is going to say uh, a bonus line of dialogue, which is, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's see it in action. My name is Adam, but we put in Greg, doesn't give you the bonus thing. We put in Adam, and it gives you the bonus line of dialogue, recognizing that you've put in the unique name that it's looking for. So that's a, a way to set a basic dialogue as well as you can save a player's name or something by using descriptable strings. Uh, and whenever you reset one of the scriptable strings, always remember it goes back to the value it has uh, before runtime. And then it adds it on to the end of the message. And then if that is true, it turns on the final line. 
Next, we're going to look at doing sort of the same thing, but this time we're going to be the number of times you speak to it, it's going to change the actual line that comes out. So we have our response message down here, and we're going to do a print value. And we're just going to create a string, call it response. Oops, main operator there. We want to do the actual string instead. There we go. All right, and then we're going to go in here, and it already is going to turn it on, but we also want it to check a condition. And we want that condition to be how many times it's been pressed. So we want to increment the int that we're tracking up by one, but we also want an int operator to be looking at it uh, as the condition. So we're going to cre create an uh, operator number. All right. And uh, we'll just name this uh, times pressed. And then we want that to be value one. And let's say when you press it more than uh, 15 times, then it's going to give, or 10 times, we'll start 10, and do something uh, different after that. Okay. So oh, I already added it. Uh, we'll just throw it in there. And then on false, we're going to change what the response is. So we can do set value here and just type in what we want the response to be. So we can do hello there. Then on true, so on more than 10 presses, we can throw the response in there and make it be something different. So I'll be like, why do you keep pressing this button? Okay. Uh, and we'll just remove this there. All right. And now we should be good after we throw the response into the actual field to display how many uh, times we've spoken to it. And oh, we've forgotten to actually hook up the response in the print value there. So we're gonna throw that in there. Response. Okay. Click. Oh. Ah, so you see here, I've forgotten to actually call the bool checker. So it's always important that you have to do the check condition in order for the bool checker to run uh, or add it into uh, your code and update somewhere so that it's constantly being checked. But as you can see here, uh, after 10, it switches to the new line of dialogue. And we can go even deeper. We can add a second bool checker. Uh, it is not advised to have it on the same game object because you won't be able to uh, find out which one you're actually triggering because uh, you'll just get the one response in the event. So we're instead going to nest it. Uh, we'll just put it on the uh, other text down here. And we're going to make a new condition for it, which is it is going to check that bool checker if it has already checked the first one. So if it's higher than 10, it's going to check again. And this time it's going to see if it's higher than 15. And just like before, if it is higher than 15, it is going to change the response once again. And we'll just say uh, something like, you're done here, go home. Please stop, go home. All right. So now that that's being checked, it will look to see if it's higher than 10, and then if it's higher than 15, and do something different. So at 10, it switches, and at 15, it switches again. So you can get some basic logic trees going, um, like have it be when the second time you speak to an NPC, they give you different dialogue, uh, or they use your name based off of the scriptable strings and the scriptable rules you set up. So finally, we're just going to take a look through the project itself. Um, so we have the documentation in here. We have the editor, which has uh, all of the editor scripts for the various scriptable properties. And then we have the helper scripts and the scriptable properties themselves. We didn't look at run event. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, it just has a single field for running an event. It's useful if you want to do anything at the end of animations uh, to just toggle a bool on and off based on the animation being played. And then finally, we have the demo scene, which this is just a more in-depth look at all of the possible things you can do with the scriptable properties. Uh, if you come in here, you can look around and see how these various scenes are set up 
to see uh, how you can implement these into your own project. All right, so that is everything. Thank you for watching.